President-elect Joe Biden just announced that he's chosen the first all-female House communications team ever, aside from making history. Um, what do you think this means? Uh, are, does it mean that women might be better at this? I'm, I'm not sure what it means, so I'm, I'm asking you guys. I'll start with you, Sarah. What do you think it means? Well, I think it's, it's amazing, and starting on the history of it, I think it ensures that women are always part of the narrative. As Anita Dunn said, she's a top Biden campaign aide, uh, the odds are very high that if it's a story about the Biden administration, any aspect of it, at least one quote in the story, will be from a woman. So I love that narrative aspect. But when I thought about it for a second about will this really change because it's coming from a woman, it hearkened the present administration, because when I think of a lot of the messaging coming out of the White House, I think of uh, Kellyanne Conway, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Kaylee McEnany, Hope Hicks, Stephanie Grisham, you name them. And it showed me that the message matters more than the messenger. If, if it's not trickling down from the top with a strong message that can kind of unify, you can't really manipulate it through the messenger because that lineup of women was discouraging for me over time with... And it was because they were towing the company line through, you know, what Trump was doing with his administration. So I don't think the fact that it's women will change it. Um, but I, I like that it's women because I think it's a, it's a step forward in a historical aspect, as you mentioned in the intro. So what do you think these women will bring to the table, uh, son, Sonny? Well, you, you know, I think that they, um, you can call me son, whoop. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I, that's what we call each other off camera. But um, I, I think that um, it points to a return, quite frankly, to um, a, a move to a more traditional relationship with the press. I mean, Trump was very effective in um, damaging the reputation of reporters and constantly attacking reporters because he wanted his uh, were to be final. He wanted his supporters to believe only what he said and not what they saw in the news. And, and you know, he really eroded the First Amendment. So I, I'm actually uh, quite pleased that he picked uh, not only women, but these women in particular, because they have strong relationships with the press. I mean, remember how Trump used to attack reporters like Abby Phillips, reporters like uh, Yamish uh, Alcindor, April Ryan, Katie Collins. It was a constant attack of women, female reporters predominantly. I mean, he, he did have that back and forth with Jim Acosta. But I, I think that this is um, a point in the right direction because we know that now we'll have um, a more traditional relationship with the press. Right. You think that uh, you agree with that, Joy? Yes, I, I think she's got. Uh, she's right. They need to fumigate the room first to get rid of the lying that went on there for years. Um, <laughs> you know. You know. I read. I read a uh, study of a group of seven nations: the United States, the UK, Canada, Italy, France, Germany, and Japan. And they found that young people are less comfortable with women leaders than older age groups. I. Mm. I, I you know, it's like. Uh, Wow. Are they not watching what's going on? Do they not know about Angela Merkel and um, uh, Golda Meir and um, I believe her name was Indira Gandhi, right? Um, mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. Margaret Thatcher. I mean, these have been great women leaders, all of them, no matter what side of the aisle you're on. It's almost like they're not paying attention, these millennials. I think it's millennials, yeah. And um, as far as um, putting these women in, I think that Joe Biden is now demonstrating correctly that women can run things really well. And we're all going to be a witness to it. He's got Kamala Harris in the second position. Uh, you know, that's the first time we've seen that. So uh, let the world right. see how well yeah. women can do, how, how well women can do when they're put in the spot, when they can do the job. Yeah. And Joy, Joy, to I your point, not, I, I mean, we know that women leaders have done really well when it comes to the pandemic response, right? Think about Australia and New Zealand. Right. I mean, they, they, they're proven to be effective leaders time and time again. If you look at any study, I mean, Harvard has a tremendous amount of data on this. Women have, in comparison to men, I hate to say it, but it's true, have more leadership skills if, when given the opportunity. Don't, don't and believe... unfortunately, oftentimes we're not. Don't we all believe at this point, I know I do, that if Hillary Clinton were president and instead of Trump for the last four years, we would not have, we would not be number one in the world in COVID uh, cases and COVID deaths. I Absolutely. just believe that. I don't think that Hillary would have lied to the American people. She would have been interviewed by Bob Woodward and she would have said, this is a terrible thing. We've got to clamp down on it right yes. away. I know she would have done that.
Yes. So, yes, to your point, I agree. Yeah. Also, millennials just need to do a little homework to find out who the great women leaders are. It's not like the information right. isn't out there.